This episode of Hack Tip is brought to you by Opt Genie. Your next incident doesn't stand a chance. Welcome to Hack Tip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morris, and today we are learning about here documents. Now, last week we added variables to our very simple shell script. This week we are learning about a new way to make your shell script work using something called here documents, or here docs, or here scripts. All of those work, it doesn't really matter which one you want to use, you can use all of them at the same time if you want, I don't care. But I'm gonna call them here docs. So all here docs are written like this. First you will have a command, and then you'll have a couple of carrots, and then a token, and on the next line or lines, you will have the text of the here doc, and then the token again. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up our script in gedit, and then add a here doc. So you're gonna notice that I make a lot of changes, but it's all going to work the same. So the script is going to go ahead and look like this. Okay, also I wanted to throw out a quick reminder that everything in this script has also been covered on Hacktip in previous episodes. So if I gloss over something in this episode, that's because it's already been covered. So if you have a question about anything that is in the script that I haven't covered in today's episode, check out the playlist on Hacktip over at youtube.com slash hack5 for any questions that you might have. Now let's go ahead and jump back into this script that we have. Now here documents use a command that can accept standard input, like I used cat, for example. Another one would be FTP if you wanted to use that instead. You don't have to use cat, you can use any other acceptable command, it's just one that I'm using. Then you have the two little carrots, and those are right here, and those are called a delimiter, and these will tell the command to read whatever is written up to that EOF signifier down below and then output it. And the token is whatever text you want it to be that will indicate the end of the text that you want to run. So make sure that the token is something that won't be duplicated anywhere in the middle of your script. So for example, I want to want to use like the word body in my text because I've already used that within the HTML. You also can't have any trailing spaces on the token line, like right here, so if I had a few spaces, it would error out. So you'll notice that the color changes when I do that. That's a really easy way to tell. It'll screw up the script, so make sure you don't have any spaces after that. So we use EOF right here and EOF at the very end, and this means end of file in programming land. Pretty much every single programming language that you work in will use EOF to syndicate the end of a file. Uh, the nice part about here documents is that it doesn't care about quotation marks as well. So if I had any quotation marks in here, a single or double, they're just treated as regular text, which means that you can stick them pretty much wherever you want. Also, I did want to mention as well, if you change this caret right here to caret caret and then a tack or a dash, you can then add any kind of indentations to your script to keep it looking organized and fresh. Now after the break, I will go ahead and show you what this looks like whenever you run the HTML script and why you would use this. The holidays are upon us, and if you run an online business, you know how important this part of the year is. You need to make sure your platform, your services, and your systems are ready for an influx of customers. But here's the thing, incidents are going to happen at any time, anywhere, and you want to make sure that your company responds quickly and efficiently to unplanned issues by coordinating between your unsung heroes, those ops and those software dev teams. So getting alerts immediately is critical when an incident occurs, and that's why there's Ops Genie by Atlassian. Ops Genie empowers your team to plan for service disruptions, stay in control, and it helps to notify all the right people through scheduling and escalation paths that take into account things like time zones and holidays. Deployment and scheduling of alerts is totally flexible, and it's supported by over 200 integrations like Jira, Amazon CloudWatch, Datadog, and more. OpsGenie can also help your team learn how to improve future incident responses with the built-in tracking and insights. Now, if your admin, Alex, for example, is still in a turkey coma from Thanksgiving, she's not answering her email, and you have a server down, OpsGenie will take that into consideration by alerting Mary instead, and your customers are happy because of that fast response time. Planning before an incident is crucial. And with Ops Genie, your next incident does not stand a chance. Visit OpsGenie.com to sign up to get a free company account and add up to five team members, no credit card required. That's OpsGenie.com. Never miss a critical alert with Ops Genie. 
We're now back with here docs. So I am going to go ahead and save my file that I had on here and go ahead and close out of there so that we can get on to the next step. Uh, so I wanna go ahead and rerun this and open it up in Firefox and see what happens. So if we jump over here, I'll go ahead and run sysinfo caret sysinfo.html as usual. And then I'll open it up in Firefox. Hit enter. All right, so this is what we have so far. And basically you'll notice that it looks exactly the same as it did with the echo commands. Oh, that's really cool. So why would you wanna use this instead of just an echo command? Well, here docs are treated as separate files. They originated in the Unix shell and they are used in tons and tons of different programming languages. In a broader perspective though, here docs can be treated as both a file or a string and some shells treat them as a format string literal, which can allow for variable or command substitution. And that's really fun. Now here docs can also make it easier to avoid quoting errors in syntax. You notice that I had to erase those quotes since they were with the echoes, since quotes are treated completely differently. And it also looks a lot cleaner in some cases as well. So honestly, I prefer here docs. They look a lot better. So here docs can also be used in scripts like this or even in a prompt in your terminal. So if you're not writing a script, you can still use them in the terminal if you need to. I would suggest messing around with the syntax of here docs to learn how to use them and to mess around and see what kind of things you can actually do with them. Try running an FTP command with a here doc and let me know if if you're successful with this. I will be building upon this next week, so it's a very important thing to understand. Now stay tuned because coming up on Hacktip, we will be adding some shell functions into our script. And until then, I wanna hear your feedback. What programs are you using? What are you learning about as far as shell scripting? Comment below and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be around next week. Trust your Technolust.